Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Writer here, Consultant Audiologist and Director of ClearWax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video of our recently developed Waxscope, which is due to be launched in early December 2022. And we have here a, a screaming and crying child lesser who attended today with her parents for uh, a bilateral uh, earwax removal. And the initial examination you saw was taken with the eye clearscope endoscope. And as you can see, it was neon impossible to um, to uh, not only uh, get a view of the ear with the eye clear scope, let alone to perform the procedure. And uh, I resorted to the wax scope, and uh, if truth be told, the wax scope really, really came in its own here. It was, um, it was really much easier and safer to use with the child who was uh, screaming at the top of her voice, bless her. And um, so with the wax scope, because we've got the speculum attachment, it helps to stabilise um, the ear. So we insert the speculum now, this speculum, we're using the, the 3.5 millimeter one, our smallest size one, and it's got a flared proximal end. I'll come back to that in a moment. You can see I've managed to remove all the cluding wax. That's the patient's eardrum. It's all intact. Being three years of age, very narrow ears, as one would expect. So with the speculum, it's got a flared proximal end, which basically means as you insert it into the ear, it, you, you can't over insert it because it physically won't allow you to push it in any further. But that also helps to stabilise the speculum in the ear. It's similar to your rose and your share specular that's available for uh, microscopic ear wax removal using a speculum. Now, just to give you some backstory, this patient, she's age three, she's got delayed speech and language development. They have been referred to ENT. It's because of the backlog, it's been about a year. And fortunately, they've just received their appointment letter for, I think, a couple of weeks' time but um, they, they wanted the wax to be removed prior to visiting. So just in case, you know, they're not able to remove the wax there and um, they wouldn't be able to do the hearing test. Now it's not known whether the wax occlusion is the root cause for the child's delay in their speech and language development. It may well be because if you're not able to hear, of course you're not able to then understand speech and um, recite speech back and learn, learn the language. Um, it's just a bit of soft wax here near the entrance. I just want to get this out for the patients. She's, you know, we're here, we've managed to get everything else out. There we are. Now, the patient's father had been instilling some sodium bicarbonate drops, which made the ear really wet and gooey. So there is some residual wax here. And again, it's really hard just to examine the ear, but with the wax scope, as I said, it's a lot easier. There is some residual wet wax there, but it's not occluding the eardrum. The eardrum was slightly inflamed. I did a tympanometry and middle ear function test that came back normal. So. We're safe in the knowledge that the patient's outer ear is now clear because you can see the eardrum, so that's not going to be causing um, any delays in their speech and language development. The middle ear is functioning fine. So it's now over to the ENT team and the paediatric audiology team to see if there's any underlying cause for the child's speech and language development delay. Um, if you are interested in the Waxcape, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you.